Hi there, this is Stephen O'Grady from Red Monk. Uh, we are here to talk about uh, a, a subject that is very interesting to me in terms of the uh, database's relationship to CICD, uh, Continuous Integration, Continuous uh, Delivery. And to talk about that with me today, I have Robert. Robert, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Robert Reeves. I'm the CTO and one of the co-founders for Datical. Exactly right. Okay, so Robert, you have uh, essentially, as a company that's been doing essentially this kind of work for a while, integrating the database into the developmental processes. Uh, you have some, some things for us to talk about, so why don't you kick us off? Well, sure. I mean, uh, thanks for having me. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, I kind of wanted to start out with a, a picture I have of a DBA being invited to a Agile Scrum meeting. <laughs> um, we, we see that the uh, our database administrator is fully integrated oh, into yeah. what the development team's doing, and and certainly no surprises nope. when, when that change request comes uh, uh, for a, a production push to the uh, production database. No surprises whatsoever. Uh, I, I think this is, this is very descriptive of where we are with integrating the database into continuous integration, into continuous delivery. Whether we're looking at it from a perspective of agile software development, um, DevOps, moving to the cloud, uh, certainly even adopting things like uh, platform uh, as a service, things like mm -hmm. uh, cloud foundry based applications, cloud native apps. Yep. We've got a real challenge around all of these things of bringing in the database. No, there's, there's, um, no, there's no doubt. You know, we have this conversation all the time, you know, where, you know, organizations, you know, cloud native organizations, as an example, that think it's very natural to bring together and conflate, uh, for example, teams that do ops and teams that do dev. Uh -huh. Are in a position where the you know this this picture unfortunately is accurate you know where the database folks oh, yeah. are still left out in the cold so yeah there's no doubt that we see this all the time. Well, for sure, and and, and you know we've got a company that is using um, you know uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, and they are moving light speed with delivering their applications. However, they're having to wait uh, seven to twelve days right. to get a change made to that production database. So. What we're dealing with is we're moving really fast on the application side, but it's kind of a moot point. Yep. It, it's it's not delivering uh, the value that we need uh, to our you know end user, the okay. person who actually benefits from the software. And and what I've got here is is a, a warehouse. It, we're not talking about containers, but but that's part <laughs> of the problem. Yeah. Um, or part of the challenge rather. It, it's you know look, we are not done with our jobs as software engineers, as release managers, DevOps engineers, DBAs. We are not done with our job until the software is in production. Mm -hmm. And it's very similar to how brick and mortar companies deal with inventory. So inventory, you convert cash into a thing. And, and it represents risk. You might buy too much, you might buy too little. Mm -hmm. And if you get uh, too much, you have to liquidate it at a low price. If you get not enough where you're leaving money on the table. We do the same thing with software. We convert our cash into salaries for people, into cloud services. Uh, God help you if you're still buying servers. But, <laughs> but you're, you're converting cash into something. Right. And you don't get that money back until that software is in production. And it's very much like inventory. And what is blocking companies today is that database. Right. There, there's a real challenge there. And, and I wanted to kind of start about, you know, we, we talk about, you know, yes, we want to bring in DBAs. We want a more inclusive organization, but we're talking about dollars and cents as well. Yep. Uh, we're not going to be able to get our software out until we solve this bottleneck around the database. No, agreed. Yeah, no doubt. No, and it's, it's, it's just amazing just sort of as an abstract and certainly as we'll talk about here that – you know the the application development process is looks nothing like it did uh, ten years ago. That's certainly fifteen years ago. Yeah. The database process looks pretty much the same. So, <laughs> you know, I think this will this will uh, that's actually uh, an unintended uh, segue to uh, the deployment gap here. At but uh, why don't you walk us through oh, yeah. what you mean? Yeah, I've got another presentation where I've got. 
things from 1979, uh, you know, like All in the Family and Sanford and Son, Dukes of Hazard, The Walkman, yeah. and Oracle version two. <laughs> we, we really haven't changed how we deal with that database since 79. Um, yeah, and that, that's what we're dealing with here. Um, you know, look, it, it's right now in the past when we were releasing once a quarter, twice a year, um, we wanted the world's most advanced computer to review our SQL scripts. Um, that was okay because we weren't releasing very fast. But since then, we've gotten faster and faster. With as you said, Stephen, you know, we have really changed since 2002 in the Agile Manifesto how we get software out the door. We haven't changed the database, but we know those things work. Yep. We know Agile works. We know DevOps moving to the cloud. Those things work. Yep. And so the question is, can we apply those lessons learned to the database? I think we can, Hopefully. but I, I think that's what we need to start thinking about. Like Agreed. that stuff worked over there, can it work over here? Yep. So this is, uh, this is uh, you know, uh, some images of, uh, you know, the software development process as it is today. <laughs> uh, this is us over on the, the left side, getting code out very quickly. And those on the right, those are DBAs that are handling those releases. Uh, um, I don't think they're going to make it. No, I don't. I'm, I'm betting not. <laughs> and and this is, you know, more of the same. But I, I think this is very, you know, emblematic because, you know, over on the dev side of the house, we have developers. Right. If you need a tool, well, you write a tool. Yep. You know, how, how many, that's where, you know, Hudson and then eventually Jenkins came from. Yep. That's where, you know, oh gosh, we have CVS and then we have Subversion and now we have Git. That came from development, mm -hmm. developers fixing this. We don't have that skill set over on the DBA side. Um, our DBAs are better at, uh, um, you know, at, at SQL, about provisioning the database, dealing with storage and performance. Agreed. So those skill sets do not align with improvements like they do on dev. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? Do we slow down on dev or do we make those guys on the right speed up? Um, <laughs> what, what, what do you think, man? What do you think we should do? Uh, I, gee, generally, very few of the businesses I talk to today are interested in slowing down. So why don't we, why don't we try for the speed up? <laughs> what, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, this is, um, a, a lot of people would agree with that. Uh, we did a survey because, you know, we're certainly seeing this stuff when we started Datical, we were seeing it anecdotally. But we really wanted to see, okay, is this emblematic or is this something that we're just seeing here and there? Um, is, is this symptomatic or is this just kind of outliers that are experiencing this pain? Right. And it turns out it is symptomatic. Um, well, over on the left, you can see that 90% of dev managers say that the database change process <laughs> is delaying releases. 90%, yeah. And 91% of DBAs are saying the same. Yeah. Um, okay, great, we're going slow and it's because of the database change process, but I think the real takeaway from that is that 90% of dev managers and 91% of DBAs are agreeing. <laughs> um, that should terrify <laughs> the average CIO. That's not a good <laughs> thing. Oh yeah, it, it, these, you know, like, look, I would argue these folks, folks, a lot of times don't even like each other. I mean, this is very right. much a Star Wars versus Star Trek thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, when these folks start agreeing on something, uh, management really needs to pay attention. Yeah. Um, they're saying 75% of the DBAs are saying that the delays are increasing yep. and that errors are increasing as well. Um, you know, we didn't really get to the heart of that of why that is, but that's kind of terrifying. The fact that, you know, errors are increasing and it's still getting slower. Right. Um, we say, we believe that it's because the number of releases are going up. Mm -hmm. Because of the things that dev and the DevOps teams and test automation, the stuff on the left side of that software development life cycle right. is going so fast, it's killing them. And they're spending less time on these reviews Agreed. and less time bad stuff's getting out there. Yep. Um, they need automation. Uh, uh, the fact that DBAs are now saying, hey, we need some automation here. Uh, in the past, uh, going fast was the enemy of stability. Mm -hmm. And now it's not viewed that way because we see speed and stability on the application side of the house. Certainly, you know, first with unit tests. 
automation yeah, yeah. and continuous bills. Those are good things. And, and we're starting to see kind of a sea change in, in, in um, ideology on, on how we handle the database. I, I wanted to kind of get into uh, more abstract and, and, and something that we have learned to apply in development and, and how we can apply it to the database part of the stack. And this is that idea of parallel change. And, and, and all these images are from, you know, Martin Fowler's website. Um, and, and this idea of expand, migrate, contract. We have two bits of code. You know, maybe it's two web services. Maybe it's a client and a server. Who knows? Mm -hmm. And as you can see on this slide, we've got an old version, which is using the data clump co code smell to move data around, to move uh, variables around. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a bad thing, all right? And we want to migrate that to use a coordinate class. And of course, we have to change these methods uh, um, that uh, the, the, the client that is expecting to get data in a certain format. Uh, we can't just willy-nilly change this stuff. So we have this idea of expand, migrate, contract, and what you're seeing here is the expand portion of that. We have added a new version. Uh, in this example, we're just adding uh, a, a new bit of code. Mm -hmm. it does the same thing, but it returns the coordinate class. Right. All right. Um, and so we haven't changed anything on the left with the client side. Now. What we do is slowly but surely keep the old version and the new version going while our client side, the, the dependent applications, are updating that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, not all of them are updating at the same time, and that's okay. They're on their schedule, their release cycle. Right. Finally, once we get them all updated, then, then and only then can we contract, can we remove functionality. Mm -hmm. So very much expand, you know, uh, add the new functionality to uh, uh, the parent, um, migrate the children, yep. all right? And then once the children are all migrated, then we can get rid of, we can contract the old bit yeah. of code so we're not having to worry about it anymore. This is basically describing how we do that. You know, we talked about feature functions and, and that, that kind of stuff earlier. But, you know, look, first thing we do is we eliminate that back and forth between dev, QA, DBAs, all right? We're not tracking our changes in spreadsheets. We're not, uh, um, it's not tribal knowledge stuck between somebody's ears. You know, first place we're gonna do is we're gonna check this, you know, our changes to the database uh, into source code control. Right. And from there, it's gonna integrate with your existing tools and, and, and procedures and processes. So, for example, you're using Git and Jenkins, mm -hmm. great. All right, you just check in Datacol in your SQL scripts into um, Git and have our integration with Jenkins uh, uh, installed. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's just a plugin. Um, if you're using uh, TFS from Microsoft, no problem. Same thing. We don't want companies to change how they are doing the software development uh, lifecycle today. They've made an investment in certain tools. They've, you know, a lot of, of blood, sweat, and tears into changing from waterfall to agile and incorporating DevOps in the cloud. We don't want to change that. We want to slipstream, um, have, have the DBA uh, database changes just kind of benefit from all that and just slip right into how they're going, into their path. Right. And so by automating those deployments and that validation, you're getting the same thing that you got with um, all of the good stuff that we did with a code but apply to the database. And that's pretty powerful to basically say, hey guys, this is just your invitation to the party. Join the circle, join the scrum, and all of the good stuff that we're doing over here, you can benefit as well. Yeah, and the whole organization can benefit. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the biggest takeaways for me when we have these conversations is just that, you know, the benefits are, are you know, as you note, both individual and organizational, right? So even on an individual level, you know, obviously you spend less time doing things that are boring. You know, you can automate out some of the tedium, but from an organizational standpoint, you know, the benefits are equally, you know, sort of impressive, you know, in the sense that you can move more quickly and deploy more quickly. You know, and I guess, you know, just sort of by way of, of you know, sort of a wrap up, you know, I mean, I think it's, you know, we're in a world that, you know, has come to the consensus that it made sense to bring together uh, developers and operational staff 
because you know breaking down that barrier allows everybody to move more quickly and operate more efficiently. Mm-hmm. So I can't. <laughs> I don't understand how you would make the argument that you shouldn't do the same thing with your databases as well. And this has been a great opportunity to see essentially how DataCal is doing that. Thank you.